We're giving you a one-way ticket out of Frump Town. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be an epic video compiling all of the best of the best tips to help you look as modern and vibrant and youthful as possible. We want our outside to match the inside. So in this video, we're sharing all of our favorite tips. Hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Beware the tent top, beware the poncho. Here it is in its full glory, this striped, kind of like ocean colored poncho. Notice the bold stripes right across, what? <gasps> Tummy and hips. <gasps> No. It's just adding volume there. That's where the eye goes. It's like meow. Your best option would be to totally remove the tent top and you could wear a top like I'm wearing right now, which is more body skimming. It has some shape, but still very forgiving, billowy, covers the arms, beautiful neckline, beautiful color, still framing the face, but it's giving you a bit more shape. You don't want to walk around wearing a tent. Beware of boxy styles. I see a lot of women doing this where they just grab a jacket or a sweater that is just totally oversized. It's too long for their body and frame. It doesn't do them any favors, but they think it does because it's covering everything. So the goal is not to just cover it all up. You know, in that case, we could just wear moo-moos around and call it a day. The goal is to really create shape and proportion. Highlight your assets, maximize your assets, minimize your problem areas. That's the goal, right? So here's an example of a boxy style that I found at, again, a very popular store geared for women over 40. It is, it is not good. Like there are a bunch of things wrong with this jacket. This jacket not only has horizontal stripes, which again, make you look bigger and wider across. It also has this A-line shape toward the bottom. So it almost makes you look like a barrel, you know, really boxy and really almost like this like giant barrel shape. You have absolutely no shape. The other thing is you've got sleeves that are three quarters so that the eye is always drawn to where the bottom of the sleeve ends. So you have that chopping there at the middle, then you got the chopping at the end of the jacket, then you got the chopping with the crop jeans. It's, you're just one big chop. It's like chop, 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 right? And that's not a very flattering look. You could, in theory, make this look better with some elongating dark pants or trousers or jeans. But I just think this jacket in general is not gonna do anybody any favors because it is so boxy. It's just, it's no shape, no shape at all. So instead, what you want to do is you wanna pick a more modern jacket, a more modern silhouette, one that's gonna show off your shape a bit more. But Aaron, I have a tummy and I have a lower tummy and I've got this and I've got that and my boobs are sagging and what do I do, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna get a tunic top, okay? So here's an example of me, white tunic top, V-neck, V-neck line, very flattering, three-quarter sleeve, it's lightweight, it's breathable, but it has a longer hemline, very forgiving in the tummy area, but still body skimming to create some shape, which is nice. We're gonna create even more shape by putting a modern moto jacket over it. The bottom of the moto is really what's gonna highlight the waist and again, create that shape. I swapped the crop jeans for a modern pair of mousy vintage jeans. These are a skinny pair. And then on my feet, some white loafers from Express. These are super cute and comfy, by the way. But you could always elongate even more by adding like a dark pair of mules. This is a black pair by Vince Camuto. Again, I'm adding modern details as well, like the aviator sunglasses. And that really pulls the whole look together and is an important part to consider. So avoiding those boxy silhouettes, those oversized silhouettes, I get it. They cover everything. You feel comfortable in them, but don't just hide. I know it's easy to hide, especially when you're not feeling great about yourself, but don't hide your shape. Think about how it makes you feel when you put it on. Do you feel pretty in it? Do you feel feminine in it? Do you feel sexy in it? Do you feel sophisticated in it? Do you feel youthful and modern and vibrant in it? Nine times out of 10, I will guarantee you the answer is no. The crotch framing tunic. You're like, what? What did she just say? Crotch framing tunic? That sounds terrible. Well, if that's because it is. It's terrible. So here it is, my friends, the crotch framing tunic. What does it frame? Where does the eye go? 
right into your crotch. That's exactly what I want to highlight when I dress. No, I do not. And also that V shape where the extra fabric is on the hips makes your hips look bigger and makes you look wider. It also makes your legs look shorter. It's just really bad. Now I understand the concept. The concept is to create this like hourglass shape. You're highlighting a waist and you're creating a little more volume on the hip. So you create hourglass. It also covers the hips, butt, and thighs, which is nice. But there's another way to do that. Get rid of that crotch framing tunic altogether and go for a different tunic like this one by Nick and Zoe. This one has a rounded hem, no weird crotch framing hemline. It also has a really cool keyhole detail at the top, which what? Draws the eye up toward the face. It's body skimming, but still forgiving around the tummy, still covers hips, butt, and thighs for the most part. It's a little bit shorter than the last one, but it's kind of nice because it gives you a little more leg, right? It doesn't really cut off your leg like that first one did. Let's take a look at this again. The bad crotch framing tunic. We swap out the tunic, go for a different tunic, and it looks much better. Ditch horizontal stripes. I know that they are very chic and sophisticated. They have that preppy nautical feel. You may even conjure up images of Coco Chanel and her stripe tops. But for most of us, horizontal stripes are not a great look. There are ways of styling them that will minimize the damage. In general, I'd say just skip them. You don't need them in your life. Let's take a look at a before outfit. Here it is, these very thick horizontal stripes, jail cell uniform kind of stripes. They're thick and they're bold and they're not doing any favors because it really makes you look bigger, boxier across the top. So whether you are slimmer on the top or that's your, your larger half of your body, it's still not a good look, it doesn't matter. Making this top worse is the length because now we're adding the volume to the hip area and the tummy area, and then also the tie on the side, which again adds volume on the hip area. Okay, so let's put this hamburglar through the time machine. And here is your after look. Instead of the horizontal stripes, here's the after, we're doing a, a diagonal stripe. So it's still a striped top. It still has some pizzazz, right? But the stripes, the angle of the stripes is going to actually work in your favor instead of working against you, which is what we don't want to do. If you have a tummy and you can't tuck in your top, then just wear your top out. And again, those diagonal stripes are gonna be minimizing instead of actually adding volume. One other quick note about the difference between this top on the left and this top on the right. The after top, the one by frame, has not only that V-neck, which is more elongating and slimming and more flattering, it also has a skinnier stripe. While this skinny stripe isn't great for being on camera because it sort of conflicts with the camera, it is much more flattering for women in general to wear the smaller scale stripes versus those large oversized stripes. Ill-fitting shorts. I don't know why this happens, but especially those stores geared for women over a certain age, the shorts are cut weird. They're not flattering. They don't look good. So really be careful with the shorts. This pair of shorts in particular, I don't know, it almost is like a cocoon shape, you know, like a half circle on the leg. It's just a very odd shape. They're linen, so they're cool and they're lightweight. They're very see-through, which I don't like either. And the length, eee, I don't know. Don't like the length either. Best would be to get rid of this t-shirt altogether. I'm gonna swap it out for a really pretty blouse by Free People. It's a lace blouse. It does have long sleeves. They push up really easily. And then I swapped out the shorts for a pair from Nordstrom. The shape of these shorts is totally different. They're still linen, same fabric, same color, but the shape is so different and you can see it. It's more of an A-line shape. And remember in my shorts video, I talked about how if you get shorts, you want a little room around the legs to make your legs look smaller. That shape does that. So that like weird cocoon shape in the first pair of shorts does not. But these shorts do that. And they're also a shorter inseam length, which definitely makes the whole look more youthful and less frumpy. Loud printed pants. Loud prints in general, big prints, oversized prints, big scale prints. When you are trying to look as modern, as youthful, as sophisticated, as slim as possible, you want to avoid a loud printed pant or shirt. That doesn't mean you can't wear them. I'm just saying if you, if you are trying to achieve those goals, 
then you want to go with a smaller scale print. So let me show you an example. Here is an outfit with a black tunic top. This top, by the way, I really enjoy. I think it's great. And some very bold printed pants. I could totally see a lot of women rocking these pants. There's nothing wrong with the pants. I'm just saying if we're trying to put our best foot forward and look as sophisticated, youthful, modern as possible, we're not gonna go with these big, giant, bold prints. Instead, we're gonna swap these gigantic printed pants for something much more subtle. So here is an example of a pair of pants that are printed, but much more subtle, much more sophisticated, elongating. These are a polka dot print, very small scale. You can see the difference and how much longer I look, leaner I look, more sophisticated I look. Again, nothing wrong with the big bold prints. It's just if we're trying to put our best foot forward, we're gonna go with smaller scale prints. Ditch dated jeans. So if you are wearing a pair of jeans like these, that are cropped in a weird place, that have some cutesy pom-pom detailing and embroidering at the cuff, that are saggy in the butt, so it looks like you have a load in your drawers. Every time you wear them, they stretch out so much, it looks literally like you took a dump in your pants, sorry for lack of a better word. That is not a good look. You need a good pair of jeans, and you don't have to break the bank doing that. There are plenty of affordable options. You can go, again, the outlet store route, the thrift store route, eBay, Real Real, Vestier Collective. You can do on sale, so many things on sale right now. So just choosing modern jeans, ditching the dated jeans can make such a big difference in your overall look. Now, instead of dated jeans, I have on modern skinny jeans. These jeans are by J Brand. They're called the Natasha jeans. They are an ankle length. They are a particularly great length for petites, but the jeans also come in regular lengths for those of you who are taller. I get a lot of questions about capri pants. Are they okay? What length is okay? So let's talk about the length of the capri pants and also discuss why they're so tricky. So they're so tricky because literally anything cropped on your legs is going to shorten your frame. You want to wear a longer pant, more specifically a flared leg or wide leg pant. That's going to make you look as long and tall as possible. So when you throw on a pair of capris, you're just cutting off the leg. There is an optimal length for capri pants. The optimal length is at a small part of your leg. You don't want to wear a pair of pants where the hemline falls to the widest part of your calf. That's the worst length for a capri pant. What's best is finding a pair of pants that is lightweight, breathable, but also goes to that skinnier part of your leg, the ankle. So here's an example of a pair of cargo pants that falls to the ankle. It's actually kind of a cargo jogger. These are by Derek Lamb. You can see in the after here that my leg looks longer and it looks more polished, it looks more sophisticated, and it looks less frumpy. Really paying attention to the hemline of your pants. Big deal. I gotta say the selection for comfort shoes is grim, really grim. Like why is it so grim? There are so many women over 40, over 50, over 60, 70 that want comfortable, beautiful shoes. These, again, very comfortable, but they're doing nothing for your outfits and your overall appearance. I'm just wearing jeans and a t-shirt and these shoes are ruining the outfit. I'm wearing just cute little skinny jeans, dark wash and an express v-neck tee. And these shoes are definitely, they're just wrecking it, wrecking it. The first option I wanna show you are these sandals by Easy Spirit and they have a line called Evolve. So you can see that these definitely make a difference with the outfit that the jeans and the t-shirt look so much cuter with these sandals and these sandals are still very comfortable. They have that arch support. They're gonna have this shock absorption. They do have, you know, the cushiony sole and the, the, the tread that really isn't, you know, you're not gonna slip slide around. And then it does have this nice strap in the back to keep your foot secure and in place, and they're light as a feather. There are a couple more I wanna show you, a couple more options. This would be a more elegant option. These are by Naturalizer, and it's a, a slip-on sandal, and these do have two straps across the top. Now, I will say if you have bunions, those are just the bones that stick out on the side, this strap does not cover the bunion whereas with the other sandal, it does. But these are really elegant and maybe a, a tad dressier. They do have a heel. They also are comfort shoes, but I thought these looked really 
great and terrific. So if you need a dressier summer sandal or dressier sandal going into fall, these would be really lovely. Your shoe choice has a major impact on a lot of things, not just looking slimmer, looking longer, looking taller, looking more youthful, looking more modern, looking more expensive, all of it, big deal. Don't just throw it away. Don't just say, it mm, doesn't really matter. It does. I wanted to give you an example of a pair of shoes that I wear all the time. They're C by Chloe wedges. They are the highest heels that I own. They're like four and a half inches. With this ankle strap and the skirt, you can see the shoes are really cutting off the leg. I'm gonna take a lower heel that doesn't have an ankle strap. It's just a, a classic pump. These are by Ann Taylor. And you can see how much longer my body looks and the legs look. Isn't that amazing? Like just a simple shoe switch. Even if I put on the same concept as these pumps, but with the flat version, even that is very elongating, especially with the skin tone color. So that's another thing to think about, wearing shoes, especially if you're wearing a skirt or dress, that are in a color that matches your skin tone. Now, if I have on a pair of black pants or dark jeans, I probably wanna wear dark shoes because that's gonna keep the line longer. So just thinking about what you're wearing and making those shoe choices strategically to go with what you're wearing so that you can create as much length as possible and also look slimmer. It's all in the details. The details are everything. Let me give you some examples. Remember the shoes I showed you in most of the before looks? They're incredibly comfortable. They are technically comfort shoes. They're supportive, they're lovely to wear, but they don't look modern and they don't look current. They look older and dated, okay? Swap those for a pair of comfort shoes that are equally comfortable, but cuter, like the Bueno pair I showed you. Or maybe you could do a white sneaker, like a Ked sneaker, or a great sneaker, leather, white leather sneaker. Those are really on trend right now. So thinking about the footwear choice. The footwear choice is a huge deal when it comes to dressing and looking younger. I know that they're very on trend right now. We've talked about them four years. I mean, really, if you look back, I probably started talking about them three years ago, but they're very tricky to style especially for those of us who are over 40 because they can tend to look very frumpy or almost like juvenile. It's a pair of Italian leather designer sneakers by P448. And these are in like a silver leopard print. I love the color of these. I love how neutral it is, but it still has a pop. They're just a really cool pair of sneakers. But you could just go the route of like basic white. There's no problem there. You can always do that. I just love layering a shirt under a dress. It's such a cool, unexpected look. Even more unexpected when you pair it with the sneakers. You're not going full on, I'm dressed up. You're kicking around casual, but you're elevated, you're polished, you're pulled together, you feel confident and stylish and like you're hip and you know what's going on. This is one of those looks I just love. And I do feel like women at any age can rock this look. The next thing you wanna think about are your glasses, your sunglasses. If you wear a pair of modern sunglasses, and I showed you some, I showed you some aviators, I showed you some flat top ones, oversized, really funky ones, that will take the whole look up a notch. You'll look more stylish, but also it will make you look 10 years younger. It really will. Just that one detail alone makes such a big difference. So making sure that you pick out modern sunglasses, that you're current with your sunglasses. And if you have prescription sunglasses, invest in one pair that's classic. Like maybe it's an aviator, maybe it's a square frame, maybe it's a cat eye shape. There are like three or four classic shapes that will not date you, that will not make you look older, that you could have and wear for years to come, that will still keep you looking youthful and modern. Again, here's where you can get kind of lost in the bold, Lane. You go for the big black and white bold beaded necklace. The problem is it's not always tasteful. So let's take a look at a before and after. So here's the before. Go through the time machine. And then here's your after. Same white button down, just unbuttoned a bit more. And instead of that black and white beaded necklace, we have a gold statement necklace. The gold necklace is still beautiful, it's still impactful, it still grabs the eye, it still does all of the things that the other necklace does, except 
it looks a lot more elevated and sophisticated and just frankly expensive. Be really careful with those jewelry choices and making sure that you make those sophisticated, tasteful choices that will make you look youthful, modern, sophisticated, but also age appropriate. The way that I would prefer that you think about it is that you're creating a little jewelry capsule collection. You get like a couple of bracelets that you love and you can mix and match and wear every day. You get a couple rings that you really love and can mix and match every day. Small enough to wear every day, not dr so dressy you can't wear it every day, but impactful enough it adds some pop to your look. And then a couple of necklaces you can wear every day. This is a new purchase. This is Julie Voss, and these are little bumblebees all the way around. I have a jewelry capsule collection, a lot of Julie Voss pieces. I've got some Dean Davidson. I've got some Goriana. I've got Giles and Brother. I've got some Elizabeth Cole pieces, and I can wear all of those pretty much every day, and I can mix and match them. So that's the way I want you to think about your accessories, not like, oh, I've got to have the matching, the matching earrings with the necklace. No, 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 no. I think it's even better if you have that little capsule jewelry collection. You can see I have on this big, chunky, beaded blue necklace. I see a lot of older women wearing this type of necklace or this type of jewelry. And I know there's color and it's bold and it's a pop, but it's not the most current thing that you can wear. Instead of something like this, look for something daintier, more modern, like gold, silver, mixed metal. Look for paperclip necklaces. Those are really hot right now. Pendant necklaces. So here's an example of a necklace that I bought, I don't know, two, three years ago. I've had it for a while by Anna Beck that is more modern, but it's still classic. It's still simple. It'll still go with so many different things in your wardrobe. You could still wear it every single day, basically, but it is definitely making you overall look more youthful. So which tip was your favorite? Which one did you think was the most dramatic? You gotta share that in the comments with us. You guys, if you're feeling a little bit lost, you need just some more direction, you're not even sure where to start because maybe it went off the rails. I shared in my video, uh, my style journey video, that I too, my style has gone off the rails and I've lost my way. It's a very common thing, especially for those of us who are over 40, who are juggling a lot of different things. It's easy to kind of get sucked into the give to everyone else thing and not give to yourself. And when that happens, style is traditionally one of the first things to go. It just is, right? So if you're feeling that way, a great place to start reboot and reset your style is with our wardrobe basics checklist, because without your basics, your wardrobe won't function. When you subscribe to our newsletter, the link to subscribe is in every single YouTube description box. You get that sent to you for free. There's a freebie page and you can download and print and do whatever you want with it. You also gain access to our spring summer capsule wardrobe graphic, which you can download and print and our shoppable spring summer wardrobe, which I handpick every single piece to really fine tune your wardrobe. So make sure everything works, mixes and matches seamlessly together, effortlessly together. That's my goal always to make style simple for you guys. So take advantage of those resources. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye-bye.